Hi, this is Bruce Buffer, your voice of the Oxygen, and you're listening to MMA Mental. This post-fight interview is brought to you by MMA Mental, MMA Worldwide, and YourMMA.TV. It is sponsored by Almighty Fightwear. For more post-fight interviews from the biggest promotions, please subscribe to the MMA Mental YouTube channel. Also, like MMAMental.com, MMA Worldwide, Your MMA, and Almighty Fightwear on Facebook. And on Twitter, please follow at MMA Mental, at Your MMA, and at Almighty MMA. Okay, I'm now joined by Gazim Salmani. Gazim's coming off a huge win, fighting at uh, Bama 15 against Oli Thompson with an 18-second stoppage. Gazim, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you for having me at the show. My pleasure. Congratulations. What a fantastic weekend for you. Thank you, thank you. I trained very hard for this fight. And, uh, yeah, the result was uh, amazing. Well, let's talk a little bit about the build then. I mean, this was uh, a big step up for you. You were fighting, obviously, the first time uh, fighting in uh, fighting for Bama. It was, a, you know, a, one of the one of the more well-known promotions, especially in Europe. How did the opportunity come about for you to face Ollie Thompson? Uh, well, I uh, first met uh, Jude Samuel. He was uh, the matchmaker of uh, Bama. And uh, yeah, we got uh, through some conversations. He was in the Netherlands. His uh, wife had to fight uh, here in the Netherlands. And uh, yeah, they uh, liked how I fight. You know, I fight exciting. And uh, yeah, we just uh, we just got to fight. You know, my coach uh, Martin De Jong he got uh, everything fixed. So it was very nice. Uh, going into the fight, then, what were your views on facing Ollie Thompson? Because, of course, he's, he is—you know—you're you're very young in the sport, and he's a, a UFC veteran. So, what was your views on facing him? Well, I uh, watched a lot of his fights, and uh, well, it wasn't uh, very spectacular, you know. I uh, saw how he fought. Uh, he was a little bit an uh, all-round fighter. He came of the the strongest man competitions, and well, I saw his. Um, Stand up, it wasn't very, very high level, and his wrestling wasn't also a very high level. So, yeah, I thought uh, there isn't a very much, uh, very, uh, yeah, very much to watch out for, you know. So, I just uh, thought I did my own thing, like I do always. I come into brawl, you know, and uh, try to finish the fight as soon as possible. I mean, you, you come out, you were like a, a bull in a china shop. I mean, you come straight at him, which was, was obviously a great tactic. Was that your plan going into the fight then, just to put pressure on him? Well, our plan was, uh, yes, to put pressure on him so he uh, couldn't uh, get the takedown. Because I knew he would go to the ground. The most of the people that fight me uh, try to uh, take me down as soon as possible. And uh, yeah, we, we went through at him and uh, he came also forward. But uh, yeah, I stopped him with a stiff jab as he tried to uh, give the inside low kick. Then I followed up with some hooks and uh, I saw his head bending downwards. So I thought it was a great time to give the flying knee, and I did it, and it connected right on his chin. I was just going to ask you about the flying knee. I mean, it, it couldn't have landed better, could it? I mean, and it was you surprised it didn't actually knock him out because it did land clean, didn't it? Yeah, it, it landed right on his chin. I was surprised also that he uh, still uh, was standing on his feet. So he did. Uh, yeah, he's a big guy, of course. He is a big guy. And we've seen him fight before. He is, he is, of course, a tough guy as well. Now, once he, once you'd landed the knee, of course, you then sunk the choke in. Do you think the reason he didn't tap from the choke was he was still dazed from the knee? Uh, yeah, it was. I landed the knee, and after the knee, I gave a right and a left hook, and one of those punches connected also. So he was actually, I think, he was out. Then I uh, grabbed the choke, and I think he couldn't tap. He was out. He didn't know where he was. But at first, I, I had his head, but I didn't pull very hard, you know. I just had to uh, get my position uh, right, my feet uh, underneath his feet, and uh, then I uh, got the position right, and I choked him. And uh, I didn't think he uh, could tap. I think he was out. Yeah. I mean, could for, for you as a fighter, could the fight have gone any better than the way this fight went? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> I got no injuries, uh, and uh, yeah, it was clean, it was fast. It was uh, it was a nice fight, and uh, yeah, I didn't think it could uh, it could have gone any any better than this. Did you even feel like you'd had a fight? Yeah, of course. With everything uh, before the fight, you know the weigh-ins, everything it makes uh, it makes uh, it's not just only the fight. You know, it's also the things around it. You know, the weigh-ins, everything, the interviews. So of course, uh, I felt like I had a fight, and uh, 
yeah, it was it was fast, but I'm used to it. Every fight of uh, that I fight is almost fast. So. Yeah, I'm looking at your record, and I can see your fights are fast, but this is your fastest, though, isn't it? I mean, before this, yeah. your fastest was 35 seconds, so you've smashed 17 seconds off your off your target. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. That was my fast fight, yes. correct. <laughs> Now, uh, obviously, this was your first time fighting for Bama, and it's also your first time fighting in the UK. What was it like fighting in the UK? It was uh, amazing. I love the English uh, fans. They're very loud, so uh, that's always uh, good for me. Uh, it's a little bit the hardcore uh, image, you know, that you, image that you get uh, from the UK fans. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, my type of uh, fans. So I like that. Um, Bama is a very great organization, very uh, professional. Everything, you know, and not just uh, how they are behind the scenes, but uh, also just in general, uh, how they uh, how they prepare everything and uh, how they let you know everything. It's very, very good. The show, and it's almost also very nice, a good location, uh, great cage. Everything was just uh, perfect. What's been the reaction like when you return back home from your friends and family and fans? Yeah, they were very happy, of course. It was a big, one of, it was, this was the biggest fight of my career. Yet, so uh, everybody was uh, watching live on the Facebook stream of Bama, and uh, yeah, they were very, very, very happy. My family, of course, they uh, helped me prepare always uh, for this fight and uh, always uh, behind my back, so uh, they were very happy. My training partners also, uh, who helped me prepare, they were, uh, yeah, just, uh, they couldn't uh, be any happier. Now, after the fight, you made it quite clear that you want to you wanna fight for the title. Uh, when are you likely to get back in? Have you got a deal with Bama? Will your next fight be with Bama? I haven't heard anything yet from my uh, management or coach, so uh, I'm still waiting. I think it will be uh, in, uh, I think, a month and a half or something. Uh, I hope to get back in there. So is that likely to be with another promotion then, do you think? I th no, I think, it's, uh, with, I think it's with Bama. I think I... Uh, they want me to fight uh, another fight, and uh, I hope it's for the title. I think they promised me the title if I would win for uh, of Ali Thompson. So uh, let's see what happens. Well, fingers crossed. You've proved you've proved yourself in that one fight, anyway. So if they said if you beat Ali Thompson impressively, we'll give you a title shot. You couldn't have yes, beaten yes. more impressively than that. So if they're as good to their word, that should be your next fight. Then I mean, who, who, do you know any ideas of who your might, opponent might be, or has that that not been discussed yet? Uh, well, I heard some things, but I don't know if I can uh, talk about it. So uh, okay, I will let I will let the promotion uh, talk uh, for themselves. Okay, well, we'll leave that for now then. Well, thank you very much for joining me. No problem. Uh, and it was, it was a pleasure. Uh, and it was an absolutely fantastic way to introduce yourself to the UK fans. So congratulations once again. Yes, thank you. Uh, before we let you go, I just want to give you a chance to do some shout outs. We'd like to shout out your Facebook and your Twitter, and then anybody yeah. you want to thank your sponsors, trainers, any anybody at all. Yes, uh, I want to say, uh, first of all, thanks to the UK fans again, and uh, for Bama for having me, of course. Uh, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. It's uh, all the same name, Xim Salmani. And, uh, yeah, just uh, like me. I want to thank my uh, team, Golden Glory, and team Tassujin Dojo, uh, for helping prepare me, my coach, my head coach, uh, Martijn de Jong. I want to thank my sponsors, uh, Rinus van der Zijde and uh, No Limit Tuning Amsterdam. And I want to thank my family, of course, who's behind my back and uh, helping me prepare also for every fight. And, uh, yes, thank you for MMA Worldwide, of course, for the interview. You. <laughs> no, my, so. my, my pleasure. Well, I can't wait to see you step back in again, and I hope it is for the title. You've certainly thank proved your worth after an impressive performance at the weekend. Thank you. Sir. I can't wait uh, to perform uh, again at the uh, UK. So.